Hi class. Today we're going to talk about gases. And uh, you might remember gases from uh, when we talked about the states of matter. And we did talk about solids, liquids, and gases. So what I want you to do first is you all have your laptops open. I want you to go into Kahoot. We've been in there before. I want you to go into Kahoot. This and input, you're going to have to put the game pin in there. And I'm going to ask you three questions. And it's about gases. Some of it is some stuff you've heard and some of it is not. Oh great, we got everybody in there. And we are going to start. So take a look at the questions. Are you ready? First one. Why are gases important? What do we need them? What do we care? Well, take a look. You only have 16 seconds. That's a lot of time. So think about it. What do you think gases are important? Awesome. I'm glad that you, most of you got that we need them to breathe air. That's pretty important. Okay, the next question is, well, what are the four basic properties of gases? So is it volume, pressure, viscosity, and density? Or is it density, and pressure, and cohesion? Kinetic energy. Let's see your answers. Oh, great job. Let's go. Okay, so we got some review. Let's go. And the next question is, and we'll go through some of these. What is pressure? You may not know. This is, but we're gonna go through this today. Take a look. Let's see some of your answers. On the perfect, guys, you know what pressure is, that's great. So, I'm just gonna recap for you here some of the questions that we went through. So, really what we're looking at here is, what is gas? So we know it's a state of matter. We know the elements are liquid and solid. And gas is made up of atoms and molecules. We know our inert gases are the atoms, and like helium, love to put that in balloons, and they have a lot of space between them. So there's a lot, and they're free to move past, one each, past each other, and they can collide with surfaces and with other gases, and we know the collision results in some force against those, uh, and pressure. So what are the four basic properties of gas? So we just, that was one of your questions. Name some off. Give me a name. Pressure. Pressure. That's a good one. Pressure. And any others? Volume. Volume. Oh, look at we're pretty good. What's the next one? The amount of gas. The amount of gas. Oh my goodness. Next one. Temperature. Temperature. Wow. Okay. So we got pressure, volume, and amount of gas, and temperature. Those are the basic properties of the gas. And um, there were some scientists a long time ago, actually, that went through and they said, okay, I want to understand a little bit more about these properties and how they relate to gases and, and what happens if I make some changes to these. And these scientists created some laws. So those scientists are Charles, Charles's law, Boyle also, he looked at volume and temperature, he looked at pressure and volume, and he looked at the number of moles and uh, pressure, I think. Um, and the ideal gas law puts it all together. So we're going to talk about those, but we're going to start talking about Charles' law. So who was Charles? So J.A. Charles, he was a French mathematician and a physicist. And an interesting thing about Charles was that he was one among the first to ascend in a hydrogen-filled balloon. So if you think about a hydrogen-filled balloon, it's about heating gases, and it's about the balloon rising in the air and floating. And so I think he had a fascination with some gases, if you see. And if you see his experiments, kind of makes sense, because he quantified the relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. Now, anytime you're dealing with uh, those properties of gas, if you want to measure volume uh, based on temperature changes, you have to keep the other properties um, constant. So when you're looking at these two properties, he kept pressure and he kept the number of moles constant. So I'm going to show you an example. Let's take a look. Demo time. So we got here. What do we have here? Ice water. Ice water. And it is nice and cold. Yes. And what do we have here? Hot water. Hot water, yeah. Not as hot as it once was, but it's still hot enough. Let's hopefully it works. Now, what do we have in here? It's just an empty bottle. Yeah, just an empty bottle. It would just have a little bit of air from around. And I have added on a balloon here, yeah. 
So what I'm going to do is, so the number of moles stays constant, the pressure will stay constant, and we're going to see what happens when I increase the temperature and the volume. Let's put it in. Are we seeing something? The Is air it? inside spreading out. Yeah. Kind of blow up. Yeah. So it, it didn't have a lot of gas in there before when I first did. Oh, you can see that it's coming there. It's very defined now. Yeah. Let's. Uh, one thing I, I can do is I can blow in here and add some more gas because there isn't a lot of gas to begin with. So, but you did see the increase in volume, right? goes like this. Well, you see that it's moving? I'm not touching. Ooh. Okay, let me, let me go like this. Let's put some air in here. Ooh. And this is the thing about science. Sometimes it works, and sometimes And it could be also the amount of heat. It's gonna be very, oh, here we go. It's growing again, it's growing again. Is it gonna stick up? It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Here we go! So the volume, the temperature increased. So what happened to the volume of the balloon? It increased, absolutely. So let's put it down in the cold water now. So we got that in here. What's gonna happen? It went down, it's right? Shrinking. It shrinked. Why? Because the temperature Decrease. The molecules go closer? Well, it basically, it's about energy, right? So when we put it in hot water, what happens to those gas molecules? They move faster. They move faster. And they're actually going to be pressing more against the sides. They're going to be hitting. There's going to be more collisions. But because so the pressures actually would increase. And if I was to close the lid on this, and I was put a pressure gauge, you would see if a pressure increase. But because I have some additional volume here, this area, it's actually able to keep the pressure constant and the volume increases. So you can, and we saw that and it grows, okay? So let's take a look here at Charles Law. So what was he able to do? He showed that volume is proportional to temperature. He showed that as volume, as temperatures increased, volume increases. So it's a direct relationship, and actually, it is a linear relationship. So if you were to plot the two in a line, you'd get a straight line going up there. As one increased, the other one increases proportionally. Um, so when he made his equation, he said volume is proportional to temperature, and any time you have two variables that are proportional, they're equal to each other times a constant. So you have volume is equal to constant times temperature, or V over T is equal to a constant. So if temperature, basically that says if temperature's increased, volume increases. So why? I think we talked a little bit about that. The particles move faster, okay? And collisions happen more frequently. The force with each collision is greater. So the only way for the pressure to remain constant is for the volume to increase. Because remember, when you're dealing with two variables, and that's, in this case it's volume and temperature, you have to keep pressure and number of moles constant to actually see that relationship. So that's why the volume actually increases. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about Boyle's Law.